Hi guys and welcome to my first video on the channel of Dance Tech. What we are looking at is the HP ML310E Gen8 V2 tower server. The server is like a well, micro ATX case almost. Has of course Xeon inside, limited uh, availability on the back uh, port wise but we can make that work. All you need is USB and video out to me at least. Okay, audio would be nice, must be honest. But okay, when we take the front off, what we can see is there's place for four discs. This server comes with uh, two discs equipped, two times 500 gigabytes primary storage, if I'm not mistaken, or enterprise storage from Western Digital, 7200 RPM really nice we can use it for raid config if necessary and on the front what you can also see is there are four USB ports which is actually well quite a lot for a server to be super honest so I'm really happy with that on top we have the well the usual DVD burner actually it's weird to me that there should be a DVD burner in there but hey it's nice must admit when we open it, you can see for real that it's a server. You have the motherboard, CPU, RAM like normal, but then you have this plastic cover for really good airflow. When we take it off, what we can really see is there are uh, several slots, four slots for RAM. So what I'm gonna be putting in there is four sticks of four gigabytes DDR3 ECC memory. This memory should be supported because there's an Intel Xeon CPU inside and that one does support the ECC memory. So when originally this one came with four gigabytes of RAM. So when upgrading it, we're upgrading it immediately to 16, which is also the maximum when I'm honest. To me, that's quite little for a server, but hey, the server is for small purposes, to be honest. What we can also see is the CPU cooler is passive but since there's a fan behind it that's quite close and you also have the plastic cover normally it does cool really good in the front there's also an 80 millimeter fan the same as in the back on top we have a power supply it's the 350 watts from hp itself the nice thing about this is that since we're going to use this serve as a desktop it means it's a really reliable desktop everything that is in a server, or at least a server from HP, is server great. So the quality is just just a bit more, so that's really nice. After putting the RAM in, what I will do is just put the cover back on, put it back together and test it out because I have no clue actually if this will work correctly. Inside the server is the Intel Xeon E3-1220 V3. It's actually a really nice CPU well it's not not the best CPU but the nice part is we can just upgrade it to a normal i3 or other versions of the Xeon that are supported if you want to use a version that's a lot newer what you do have to do is upgrade to the latest BIOS otherwise it's it keeps blocking it from booting right now what I noticed is when I put it all back together is I forgot something that I think is really important since on the back default there's only a vga port what i'm gonna do is well take it back apart again and we're gonna place uh ati fire pro v4800 card in there this is a card from an old dell workstation that i used to have and well it's about the only card i have just laying around and just for this test it should be sufficient it has two display ports on the back and a dvi port this card is one gigabyte DDR G DDR5 memory, not that quick. is a one slot card. Doesn't need extra power or anything. So, well, as you know, even all the cards also doesn't need extra power. Most of the time, it isn't that powerful. And I have to be honest, it really isn't. We're gonna do some benchmarks in the end, just to see if we're able to play some games on it. But for general desktop use, playing videos will definitely be sufficient. Probably playing some older titles should also be doable. Okay, what we're doing now is booting. What I had to do is this boot sequence the HP has takes literally forever. So I sped the video up with 500%. 
and you see it still takes some time before it goes past this screen but once it passed it shows the normal boot screen on the left the right monitor is connected to the internal VGA port it's the only port that shows actually the post test then on the left what we can see on the top we're back at 4 gigabytes of memory unfortunately I have to admit the server no matter what I did did not accept ECC memory since I only have one stick of 4 gigabytes left we'll just keep it at that what I did is I just installed Windows 10 on it. This just because I had to lay around on a USB stick and I thought, well, if we're gonna play games on it, why just not install Windows 10 and see how it goes further on. Booting actually goes quite quick. We ended up not using a RAID config, but just one drive and the other one for storage. I ended up also putting an extra one terabyte hard drive in there well, to be able to put all my projects on and all my data and everything. Here, it took me some time as you can see it's night, but I did eventually install everything I wanted just to play or to test it out. First what we're gonna look at is the older title Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. This game I used to play for hours and hours on, through Steam of course. And I thought okay, it's an older title, why just not try it on the server? First we're gonna put the graphics to the highest. Even though this is an older car, it's also an older game, so I'm really thinking that this should be, well, doable. What I did not notice during the gaming itself on the server but afterwards showing uh, looking at the recording is it, it looks quite shocky even though my frame rate was quite normal but hey it's just a server I haven't played this game in several years now so I am really bad at it able to get one nice kill just for the video but overall the game isn't that popular anymore it takes really forever to load but hey it does play nicely on the server after that what I've tried to play is Portal 2, this runs perfectly. The average is about 68 frames per second, when really something happens, the lows go till 47, but it's sporadic, it doesn't happen all the time. I just made a tiny shot on it, just to show you, I think no one is really interested in me playing Portal 2. Well then we have the free to play Team Fortress 2 game. What we noticed here is an average of 56 FPS, which is quite nice. Lows of 38 FPS. What I did really notice during this is that change in scenery really dropped the frame rate. When I was inside, I almost got 100 frames per second. When I went outside, dropped, well, to 56. But then when there's also enemies in play, it goes all the way down to 38. So it is a really big difference between the frame rates but hey it's an older game and i'm playing it on the surface so that doesn't really matter to be really honest here what i started to run is cpu well not cpu cinebench just cpu benchmark i sped it up with 500 percent it takes some time but it's actually quite nice score and as you can see it doesn't overstress anything it's just running it perfectly after this just for fun doing the OpenGL test on the fire pro v4800 well to be really honest i'm not expecting the most but actually i got a 49 fps on this and the cpu got 5.68 points which is quite high must be honest i'm quite happy with this what i also noticed is during exporting in premiere pro it goes also quite good but now to be really honest would I buy this server just to use it as a desktop no the server can be quite loud is not that cheap and only if you can get it in some way really cheap from someone or for free then just go for it but to use it as a desktop I wouldn't recommend it but it also doesn't have a sound so I had to use USB headphones which happily I had laying around but it's not too common so I would not recommend it. I hope you guys liked it. This was my first video. I will hope to be uploading a lot more. But please, if you like it, leave a thumbs up and subscribe for more. I hope to see you again. Bye.